Hello everybody and welcome to this Three Colours Up. In this one we're going to be continuing on with our City States vlog series for our uh, Cult of Games members. And this one we're going to be painting one of our characters for the army. This is going to be following a very simple scheme that we've mentioned in one of the vlog episodes already. I believe it's the second part, uh, the second part of that vlog for the City States, where we talk about doing a basic white armour with a nice vibrant red as the, the sort of contrast colour to that and a few other little details as well. Because this is a character, he's going to have a little bit more ostentation than our standard hoplites and our phalangites, which is absolutely fine. It means he's a nice model to look at and a pretty good one to paint as well, especially if you're going for a very simple scheme. You keep it nice and simple, get the army done and it'll look great on the tabletop. So without any further ado, let's get down to the table and show you how it's done. So to begin on our pole march, uh, what I've done is because when he came out of the box, he's a, a resin character figure, the resin was almost white. And I didn't really want that because the, the previous painting that we've done uh, on our city states was based off the fact that the models are gray. So um, the actual plastic was gray. So we were just spraying the, the white over that gray and that was giving us a little bit of gradient to, to help work with. So what I had to do first was prime the model in uh, Mechanica Standard Grey, that was the aerosol, and then I had to go over it with the white spray, the uh, white scar spray I believe it was, or Corax White, something like that. Let me check. Nope, I have no idea. Um, the newer GW white spray, uh, which is sort of an off-white, it's almost a grey, but that has given us the miniature in the condition that we want it uh, to start with because we're getting a little bit of gradient there in the cape, and um, just anywhere else that's a little bit lower detail before we move on into our first colours. So that was the priming step just for the character. If it was just the plastic miniature, it would just be the white spray over the top of the bare plastic and then we could just move on. So what we're going to be doing first is giving the entire model a run with Contrast Apothecary White. This adds further gradient to any subsequent steps that need it and also shades our white armor because we're not going to be doing well we're doing a two-step or a two-stage white here on this one so we're not going to be going too um too elaborate we just want to keep it nice and simple so the entire model now is going to get the apothecary white and then after that we're going to move on to our other main colors With our apothecary white now down and dry, you can see what that is doing to the tone of the model. We're getting more shading. We're getting just a little bit more visual interest on all our white. It also helps a little bit on the cape. Now, whether or not that really is going to be affected by the, the subsequent step or the subsequent steps going to be affected by that, I'm not honestly sure, but it doesn't hurt to just take a step like this and just do it over the entire miniature. It, it can't really do any more harm. So we're going to be moving on to our big primary color, and that is our red, which is going to be Flesh Terror's red, which is another contrast paint. And because he's our commander, if I check out the, um, the box art real quick, just move it to the side a little, he has a lot more main color on him than the, the regular infantry, because on, the, on our guys, this piece would be brown with this sort of sash, tabard here being uh, the um, the primary color. However, I think I like the way this is going, so I'm going to do more primary color. That's going to more or less remove the need for a subsequent color after that, which would have been Gorgrunt of Fur, but I think because he's a lot more mechanical, we're going to actually have less colors, potentially, although there is a little belt um, pouch here that uh, will probably will go Gorgrunt of Fur, but yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll we'll get onto the red, and then we'll just see how that looks once it's all down and set. So let's make sure we have some of that out, and we're not charging the brush too heavily. And then I think we're just going to start on the back because that lets us see how things are going to go, and we're going to be as careful as possible because this white is now basically the armor color down and done. So it's going to be a case of making sure we don't do too many mistakes, keep it nice and neat. And we'll just go around the whole model and do everything that we need in our Flesh Charger Red. With the Flesh Terrors Red now dry, we get to see just how striking 
a color scheme this is. And you can see that some of the shading uh, from the spray and a mixture of the spray, the apothecary white and the, the flesh tears is helping on that cape. It's looking quite vibrant, looking quite good. Now, we're going to be moving on to our next color, and that is going to be for our leather, which is going to be Gore Grunt of Fur. There's not going to be too much of this. There will be a bit, but not a terrible amount before we get to move on to our next color. Um, would have helped had I not just dropped my brush as well, so we'll just use a different one. <laughs> That's how things work with me. And we're going to put the Gore Grunt into these little pieces here on the sash, and this little pouch here on his hip. And I think maybe just the string here on the chest. Apart from that, I think that's really all we're going to be doing. So it's just going to be a matter of getting in there and just coloring all these areas in. Now, close that up. The next step then, I think we're going to move on to black. There's very little black as far as I'm concerned on this model. So we're going to be using some Black Legion and for it it's going to be basically just going on to the grip of the sword onto our Gladius here. It's not really got mu much else to do. On our hoplites and our phalangites it's basically the colour of the shaft of the, the weapons so it may as well remain that on here. It would also be for a little bit of trim, but I think I'm going to keep the trim uh, gold on our commander figure just because he's going to stand out a little bit more. So that's the only black that we have for that. Um, I'll show you our example piece from the vlog so you can see the difference that we're going for here. But we're getting that nice sort of red in there. This guy obviously has a bit more skin about him as well. Uh, along with his mechanical parts too. So on to said mechanical parts. I think we're just going to start onto them. We're going to be going with Citadel Canoptic Alloy. It's a nice good sort of goldy coppery kind of colour. And we basically want to uh, base coat anything that is mechanical, which in this guy's case is pretty much all his limbs and right up to his face. So it's going to be a bit of a longer process and we want to be quite tidy with it as well. So picking out areas that we want to stay white, for example, we're going to go with, um, I think we'll just go with parts that look a bit more obviously mechanical. So we'll leave the front of the feet white, make them sort of look more armor. And then the back of the legs, take that heel or ankle joint in. And we'll work up like that, something like that. But we'll get on with this and we'll do the rest of it. And when we come back, we'll see what else we can add. With the canoptic alloy down and dry, let's have a quick look at how much we've done. So quite substantial in around the neck. I did a little bit on the helmet here, a little bit down here, and then obviously the, the trim on the sash and whatnot, as well as the little uh, sort of filigree-esque trim along the bottom of, I don't know what this is called. Jerry told me what it's called and I've forgotten. Um, and then also on the same, on the base of the cloak. I think that looks rather, rather smart. And just a little bit of trim here and there and his mechanical parts too, as well as a little bit on his shield. So the first thing I want to do is paint in the sword. And for that, we're just going to be using lead belcher. So just maybe one or two quick little layers of that because over the white primer it is not as dull as lead belcher usually is so it's quite a good base it's quite a good color to paint over white if you're looking for a little bit of a brighter metal um, for sake of expediency this is not going to be shaded it's just going to be kept a sort of more plain flat metal um, Again, this is all down to doing the army quick and always leaving you room to revisit anything you feel like later on. So keeping it simple, not shading it, works for our purposes to get the models done. And 
lets us revisit it later if we feel like it. So that's literally all we're doing with Lead Belcher. We're then going to move on to the skin. He only has a little bit of skin, which is basically his the upper part of his face. And for that, we're going to be using some Gilliman Flesh, another contrast paint. Again, we're trying to keep this simple and straightforward. There's a bit too much water on my brush. And again, we just want to get in there. Try and be neat with this. Because we don't want to take it too far. So you can see it's a little bit heavy on this eye. So let's just take a little bit out. And that should settle down to be quite even across both eyes. That's all the skin tone we need to do because everything else is metal. And for our shading of our metal, this really is our last step. Uh, so we're going to be using Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss. Uh, after this is put down onto all the gold or the canoptic alloy parts, we're then going to matte varnish. I'm going to paint the base black and that will be our last step. That will be our miniature finished. Obviously, as I've said before, if you want to go in, revisit something, add more details, add different colors to certain parts, by all means do that. This is me showing you how to get some, how we are trying to get our in-house army done to a standard that will look good on the tabletop, look good under camera. So for the canoptic alloy, because it's such a heavy wash, need to water it down a little bit. And then it's going to be a case of getting into all those details and just shading them in. And this is, to me, one of the most satisfying stages of this scheme because this is what gives a lot of our details that definition that up to now it's been lacking, particularly when you see in around the shield here on these details. That's just so much nicer looking with that little bit of depth. So we're going to go on ahead, do all this, matte varnish, and then you'll see it all finished. And here we are, we have our matte varnish down, everything's dry, and we have our pole march, or pole mark, pole march um, character finished. He is now ready for joining the rest of our army on our vlog series, and hopefully you're following along with that and enjoying that too. Um, so in general, he follows the same scheme that everyone else is going to be doing. Uh, he's a little bit more... Uh, well, he has a bit more gold about him, he has a bit more uh, decoration. It makes him a bit more interesting. When you see him, he'll be very much more a standout sort of figure in amongst the infantry uh, that he'll be attached to. And in general, I think he's at a point where he's perfectly good for the tabletop. And as always, if you feel like you're, you want to paint along or you are painting along, don't be afraid to go on in and do more highlighting or do more shading, anything like that. Remember, this is only the stopping point where I would say, here you are, ready for the tabletop. I have had comments where people have been saying, could you take it on further than that? Yes and no. It kind of breaks what I want three colors up to be. It's kind of the, the, myth, the um, ethos of getting something done and ready for the tabletop with the least amount of steps possible. I know we don't do that all the time, but I always make sure to let you guys know when we are going a bit further than that. However, this is where I want to stop. And uh, as comparison, I'll bring in one of our um, hop lights as well, just to show him alongside our commander. And it's all about the consistency. And I think we've got a good consistency going between the two figures. And I think, again, they're going to look great on a tabletop, especially, especially when you see that further out shot. That's more what you're going to be looking at as a player looking down at a table facing these guys. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, stay safe, take care, and see you again very soon.